I'm Eric Orange with Burlington County Parks and we're here for another episode of Point of Origin to talk about the artwork of Hugh Campbell. And as you might have already guessed, we're at the beach today. So Hugh Campbell was an interesting guy and for most of his career, he just hung around Burlington County and painted what he saw. But starting in the 1940s, he started to make weekly trips to the New Jersey seashore. We're gonna go and meet Art Smith and we're gonna talk a little bit about his artwork and we're also gonna hear about the time Hugh Campbell came here and fell in love. So for more on that, let's go to Art Smith. Thanks, Eric. Here we are at the beach, uh, just the kind of environment where Hugh Campbell would set up his easel and out, break out his paints and his brushes and begin to paint what he sees. As a plain air painter, Wherever an artist goes, they bring their materials because they never know when they're going to find something that they want to paint. And obviously, Hugh Campbell enjoyed coming down here so often that this became familiar to him. And we're going to look at two of his paintings right now that he did on this beach. This first painting, painted around 1957, is really an interesting, dynamic, colorful piece by Hugh Campbell. Uh, what we notice right away is not only the rich colors that exist in the greens and purples down in here, but the br bright, bright blues down in the, in the water, the swirling through here, reflected back up into the sky, the darkness of the clouds, much like what we see going on here today. Um, and, then, and then there's Hugh Campbell's applying of paint. A lot of action going on in here, a lot of movement to create these white caps, these waves breaking in, and the lesser, smaller waves down here in front. When a plein air painter paints the ocean, they have to capture what they see, and Campbell didn't make use of photographs, so he caught this and kept looking back at the waves as they would break to create this composition. Uh, a couple things to note in this painting. There's a solitary sail back here. And as a loner, Campbell was always putting a single figure, perhaps, into a painting. There's also a single seagull up here. It's kind of one of Campbell's hallmarks. This painting, more muted in some ways, but still pretty interesting in terms of color. The sky is a, an interesting, light panes gray with an interesting purple cast to the backwater and then the breaking of the wave with a lot of greens and yellows and off whites and then the blues trailing on the beach and what he's done in terms of using and in both of these paintings if you look at them closely it looks like he's using a brush not necessarily a, a palette knife um, is this drawing across here that ends up making it look like the sand and where the water has passed through. Pretty great examples of the kind of work that Hugh Campbell could do. Uh, not just limiting himself to buildings and street scenes and barns, but here's a whole nother side of Hugh Campbell that we don't see very often. And, they, and uh, just a side note that Eric sort of mentioned in his intro, that. Campbell would take a bus from Mount Holly, two hour ride, and he kept, he kept copious notes and wrote poems and journals. And in one of his poems, he's waxed eloquently and romantically about a young woman who sits across from him on his bus ride back to Mount Holly. And while he was feeling like he was falling in love, the yogi in him was careful not to let himself get too caught up in life's passions. And you could see that that becomes where he does put his passions, out here into his paintings, into his use of color, and into his use of motion to create a visual image that's pretty profound. One of the things about the painting of Hugh Campbell that's interesting is that he was really dependent upon how much money he had that would determine what kind of paints and how much paint and what colors he could purchase as well as brushes. What we see by 1957 is that Hugh Campbell's doing okay. 
He's got some pretty interesting colors going on in here. And when you look at some of the paintings, the early paintings of Mount Holly, of the buildings and the street scenes, they're much more muted. They don't have quite the vitality that's really bursting out of, especially this painting with this really bright Prussian blue up here. And there's a nice turquoise blue going on back in there and all of the colors. Uh, there's some ochre down in here. There's yellow. There's various different greens of a viridian green and there's a phthalo green and he's got some really nice darks underneath this wave. You don't see this stuff so often in his uh, painting of, of city scenes. He's really come alive. Um, and in this painting you can see that he's really gouged his brush into thick amounts of paint and has created this really impasto, almost like a sculpture of this wave crashing across. Uh, I did mention that, I, that a lot of his work is done with brush, but this, this easily could have also been done with a palette knife because of how smooth it is. But definitely the stuff up in here, the painting strokes up in here, and the painting strokes up in here were all done with a brush because you can see the, the bristle marks into the thick paint. One of, the, one of the interesting things about Campbell is that while he may not paint himself, oftentimes he puts solitary figures, solitary images into a painting that kind of can represent who he is. In this painting, we see a solitary sail of a sailboat in the distance, which coincidentally we can see when we look across the ocean, there's one out there right now. Um, there's also a solitary gull up in here. Um, his paintings are not populated often with a lot of life, but, it, but, it, but what he has done is given life to this ocean and especially to this crashing wave with the blowback coming off of the top to the curve of the, the crest of the wave to the dark underbelly to the, the shadow that he's got running across as the wave breaks to the really beautiful use of paint down in here where he's got light purples and turquoise and blues and yellows and different browns to create this incredible movement which is enhanced by his paint work, his, his brush work that pulls this wave up here and pushes the wave back over there. Well, we can see by 1957 that, that Hugh is his mastering his, not only his technique, but his composition and his use of color. This is a much more sophisticated use of color than some of his earlier paintings in, uh, in Mount Holly. Uh, he's got such variety, such blending, such mixing going on in here. I think what we can see in this painting is that Hugh Campbell is growing. He is becoming more proficient as an artist. His composition is interesting and pulls your eye into the scene. His use of color of these blues, the browns down in here, the greens, the yellows and off-whites, the mixing on the canvas is all more sophisticated than some of his earlier work. Uh, it's interesting too that some simple act like this sailboat back here pulls your eye into essentially a painting that's sort of centered but your eye goes back in there, comes up, there's your bird, your bird pulls you back into here. It's a very sophisticated technique that he's using. And the use of color from the sky dropping down into the water. I mean, it's, it's, it's not what he was doing in his early paintings. And this is a third painting that we're gonna look at that Hugh Campbell did down on the beach. One of the interesting things about this painting, among a number of things, is that this is an unconserved painting. This painting has not been cleaned. There is a lot of layer of material on top of here, dirt and grime and dust. But if you look deeply into the cracks of this painting, you can see that he's using the same palette that he used in the previous paintings we looked at. Another interesting paint thing about this painting is the amount of paint that he has put on this canvas board. His paintings aren't dated often, and so we're not sure exactly when he did this, but he had enough paint to really lay this on here in a very, very thick impasto, 
almost sculptural abstract way to create this dynamic wave breaking on the shore. One of the interesting things about Hugh Campbell as it relates to all of his seascapes is that there exists a lot more of his buildings and farms and river scenes around Mount Holly than we see of his seascapes. And if he did indeed come down in here to this area once a week and did a number of paintings each time, then where, where are those paintings and why aren't they as prevalent as the ones from Mount Holly? And one explanation may be that Mount Holly was really a draw for tourists coming into Mount Holly and then coming down to the beach. And if you're a beachgoer and you came down here and got to the beach, you'd want to take home a memory of that experience, which may be why a lot of these paintings aren't as readily available as some of the in-town in, in paintings that he did. For our fourth painting that we're going to look at down by the shore by Hugh Campbell is this painting done on the back bay. And one of the interesting things about Campbell's work is the difficulty in dating it, determining when he painted it. We've seen on this painting and on a previous painting we looked at today, a number seven with a number in front of it or a mark in front of it that we can't tell what it is. So, so looking at this paint and how he applied this paint, we can kind of assume that it was made at the same time because his palette is consistent with one of the dates, which was 1957. So this looks like, again, one of the later works that, that Hugh Campbell has done. Heavy, thick impasto that's put onto this board. Uh, it is uh, an unconserved painting, so we know that there is a richness of color underneath here. And it's, a sim again, a solitary figure of a man in a boat uh, on the water with an interesting composition of centering on this figure here and then the yellow of the sky, the clouds coming in to kind of highlight him. A lot of stroke work, um, paintbrush work down in here, a little bit of palette work, but you can see where he's laid this paint on and then taking a, a tool, a palette knife, and scraping it across so that some of the colors he put on first come through. Uh, this would be one of those paintings that we would love to see cleaned up because you can see oranges and pinks and yellows and browns in here, much like some of the other work we looked at today.